Hey guys, it's Frank. Welcome back to my channel. It's been a minute since the last time I made a YouTube video and the short answer is I just haven't been really motivated to make YouTube videos. There's a lot of effort that goes uh, behind the scenes that a lot of you guys don't see. For the most part, when you guys watch a video, you kind of just see the end product, but there's a lot of work that goes behind this. And I don't know, it's just maybe it has finally caught up to me. Nothing bad has happened to me. I'm still living in Toronto. Just haven't been feeling uh, making videos, but today, Today's a different story because I, I do feel motivated and maybe it's because I saw on the homepage uh, a title that I just couldn't resist. It was titled, What Happens If Toronto Stays Unaffordable? Let's react to this video together and I'll give you my thoughts as a person that's living in Toronto, paying rent, and uh, yeah, I do agree that it's unaffordable. So give this video a good old smash because uh, like I said, the channel is on life support so it would really help my algorithm. And now with that said, Let's dive into the video. What's gonna happen if Toronto can't get these rent prices under control? It's a question I first thought about five years ago. My rent skyrocketed $950 a month. I thought, there's no way. Back then, I remember thinking rent in Toronto was extremely expensive. Yeah, she's not wrong. Just to give you a little context, I moved in my place two years ago. I even made a YouTube video about it, and my rent was uh, $17.50. Now, it's going up just a little bit, but in comparison to the market rate as of right now, one bedroom out in Toronto, $2,500. Place I found in Toronto. I'm just having a hard time saving up for any kind of future in the city. Now it's way worse. The average monthly cost for a one bedroom apartment in September 2023 was more than $2,600. Okay, sadly I'm wrong. It's not even $2,500. It's now $2,600. And it's, it's crazy because I disclosed in my previous videos that I make $90,000 a year. I'm just going to call it out. And it's crazy because I'm paying $1,750 ish or just under $1,800. And even I'm like, this, this city is like, it's crazy expensive. So anyone that's paying like over $2,000, $2,500 for a single bedroom, you're now at the point of just getting ripped off. It's a perfect storm of factors leading rents to rise at an unprecedented speed. Not so far off in the distant future, he says, we could see rents of $3,000, $3,500, eventually $4,000 a month. It, it, it's possible because I, I looked at Vancouver's when I went on rental.ca for Vancouver, one bedroom's already $3,000. So it, it's possible. Question is, who can afford that? The average household just can't. It got me thinking, what's gonna happen to the city? What will it turn into? What will it look like? And perhaps most importantly, who will be left? We know rising rents are making it increasingly difficult for lots of people to keep a roof over their heads, but could skyrocketing rent be one of the reasons why we're seeing a shortage of workers in a number of industries? You bet. And it'll likely only get harder to recruit people to work in Toronto if they can't afford to live in Toronto. Key workers and essential workers, paramedics, police, fire, teachers. It certainly begs the question. I know it depends on the individual, but I'm at probably at the point where if I wasn't living, if I was still living in Calgary, for example, and uh, how expensive things are right now, and someone said, hey, I'll give you uh, 80 to 100K, maybe even a little bit more than that to go to Toronto, I respectfully, I'd probably still decline it. Now, I know it depends on the situation. Like, say I couldn't find a job in my existing city. This was the problem in places like London, England, and New York City, where, you know, people needed, employers needed to create um, key apartments where people could come and live in the apartment while they were working there and then go home on the weekends because they couldn't afford the time to commute. People won't move to the city if they can't live close to work. So how many hours a day are people willing to lose just to get to work and come back home? The transportation system is actually pretty well in Toronto. Like I know people complain about it, they're like, oh, it's all that stuff. Live in Winnipeg and I'll tell you, that transportation sucks. Moving further and further away, at what point do you just give up and move altogether? Turns out many people are already doing just that. We saw people leave the city during the pandemic when working from home became a thing. While life is maybe not fully back to normal, but close, we're still seeing an exodus from Toronto. A record number of people left Ontario in 2022. The top reasons, 
the soaring cost of living, stagnant wages, and low housing affordability. No matter wherever you go in, in Canada, there's, there's just a housing crisis, period, okay? Because even if you were to go back to like Nunavut or something, Okay, I bet you, actually, <laughs> does Nunavut have a housing issue? I don't, I don't, I don't think there's, there's enough people, but you know what I mean, okay? There's, there's, a, there's, there's a, just a housing crisis across the, the, the city, I mean, across the country, but amplified in the bigger cities. Certainly people struggling with housing understand it on a kind of visceral level, right? Like, wait a second, uh, I've done everything I'm supposed to do. I, I went to school, I even got a couple of gra you know, graduate degrees. I have a pretty decent job and I still can't afford housing. Like, wait, the social contract is broken. I feel like that's the societal lie that's been told to by uh, every millennial and, or, or Gen Z. And uh, I, I think that's why my Asian parents were like, go down the doctor route, you know why? Because. You're, it's a guaranteed win, okay? If you go to university, let's be real here for a second. You go to university and you pick something like, you do the fine arts, not to say you can't make a living out of arts, but you know what I mean. Um, you know, you, the odds are not in your favor to make uh, guaranteed money. However, if you go something, if you whether you do business, you do sciences, uh, whether you do you go into the health profession, you know what I mean? There, there's, there's definitely programs that have higher odds of landing you a position that pays well in comparison to a degree that might not ha be to your best bet. Not to say that the arts degree, uh, anything, there's, there's no bearing to it, 100%. But if you want to play by just percentages and odds, then obviously certain programs have the advantage. As much as the city is about its neighborhood businesses and shops, to me, the heartbeat of Toronto is the culture, the arts and music scene. So what happens to that if rents keep rising? The thing about Toronto is that it's already overpopulated. So for the most part, it's it sounds really bad, but it just weeds out the people who can't afford it. Like, this is maybe even include myself, not to say I'm any better. Like I, I very well could be booted out in the terms of just the sheer affordability. There might be a point where I'm just like, oh, can't afford it. <laughs> I'm kicked out. Let's be honest, while many people are struggling right now, Toronto is also home to a lot of rich people. As affordability and the housing crisis gets worse, expect to see more polarization. 15 years from now, we have a whole part of the city that uh, is full of people without very good life opportunities, earning very uh, little money. That's David Holchansky. He did a study on this very topic more than a decade ago, predicting exactly what we're seeing today. A city for the very rich and the very poor and a disappearing middle class. I need to double check this, but apparently 50% of uh, condos out in Toronto are owned by investors. Now, it'll be quite interesting to see, um, you know, the investors who uh, you know locked in rates at during 2020 or 21 at a, like 1%, 2%, it'll be quite interesting to see what they do with their investment when it comes to mortgage re renewal time. Will they keep their place or will they be forced to sell? Or who knows? No one has a crystal ball, but much of what we've heard from the experts about Toronto's future just isn't good. And I'll be honest, at times it felt hopeless, but when I asked some of the smartest people who've been studying this issue, some of them for decades, is there hope? I was surprised by what I heard. And so long as people are angry or feel hopeless and want their governments to do something, something will happen because you need to keep the pressure up. Organize. If you're not organized, you're not going to achieve something. So tenants are poorly organized. They, they do their best. They're becoming more and more organized uh, with these rent strikes. I am, again, hopeful that the that there's a younger generation out there who views housing as home and even maybe some young folks who want to get into the business of housing but aren't in it or don't want to be in it to make oodles of money who kind of recognize that maybe there's a way to do it in a more sustainable way i'm not a fan of that like this is just my own personal thing because as much like i get the whole unity thing right you want to combine your efforts you know if everyone is uh, complaining about housing situation, uh, you know, it, it forces governments to make a change. And we're starting to see a little bit about that. But I'm, I'm, a, I'm a type of person to kind of just, uh, you know, I, I, I want to see what I can do personally. There's always going to be crap thrown at you. You can't really change that unaffordability is a thing, right? There's nothing you can really do, like for the most part. But what can you do is like, you know, I, I like to just see, okay, I, I like to look for a, a, a higher paying job. 
right? I want to see if uh, I can make more money out of it, right? Does it take more work and effort? Absolutely, right? But I, I'd like to think that no matter what is thrown at me, I, I have the means to get through it. I might not have control of what's going on on the outside, but I do have control of what I can do on my day to day to put myself in a position to basically succeed. If we can't get these rent prices under control, who will be left? Probably lots of people. We're a long way from seeing the city hollow out. Toronto is a magnet and people won't stop coming here. So maybe it's more about how those people make it work. What kind of a life can you build here? Because if something doesn't change soon, we may continue to see a deepening divide where only some Torontonians are thriving and many others are just barely surviving. In terms of Toronto, I will say, what happens if Toronto stays unaffordable? They do have a point. I still think people are still gonna be coming here. It's no different from like how, what you're seeing down in the States in cities like New York or Los Angeles, right? There's still an influx of people. The, 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 the issue about Toronto is that you're kind of just seeing that majority of Canadians only reside in like two areas, right? They all want to live by as much land that we have in our country, second largest in the world, everyone lives by the border, right? Up between. All right, that was my sister. She's here downstairs. So anyhow, with that said, guys, if you guys like me uh, reacting to videos of what happens if Toronto stays un un unaffordable, videos like this, let me know in the comments down below. I will try my best to make more videos in the future. I know I've been really bad for the last few months, but uh, hang on with me. I will make more videos and uh, I do appreciate if you made it to the end of this video. Give this video a good old smash and I'll see you all in the next one.